been said but not by everyone, Tom? I'm sorry, say that again? This is one of these conferences that everything's been said but not by everyone, so we're going to just keep repeating it? No, everybody has something new to say. Good. We're, we're against repetition. Um, I just want to introduce the people with me, and, and they'll all speak later. But um, Representative Selena Bliss fr from the Prescott area, uh, Marchie Smith, the um, 20, 2005 NCA and PAC-10 Conference Women's Backstroke Champion who competed at the University of Arizona and is in the school's Athletic Hall of Fame, Shauna uh, Glazer, a competitive cyclist who was defeated by a male, and um, Maria Sims, who is uh, uh, our director of legal services and who has worked on me in helping our lawyer to fight this case. Before I start talking about the issue, I'd like to s tell you something about myself personally that I think is relevant to this, and that is when I was in the legislature, I voted for every single bill that extended civil rights to LGBT people, and when I was Attorney General, it was my decision not to appeal a, dist a district court decision that started gay marriage in Arizona. Um, I, uh, I feel very deep sympathy for people who feel they were born in the wrong body, but I also believe that biological males should not compete against females because it's unfair and it will ultimately underline, uh, undermine women's sports, which have benefited so much under Title IX, and we can lose the whole thing. I want to talk about two, um, two different topics. The first topic is um, we're defending a law passed by the legislature, um, and I'm the only defendant. They're, they sued four people, but the other three agree with the plaintiff, so I'm the only one defending the law that was passed by the legislature to prohibit biological boys from competing against women or girls. Um, and so the first thing I want to talk about is that that law is a reasonable one. It has a reasonable basis. There are good policy, public policy reasons for that law. Then the second thing I'll talk about is some, more spe some specifics in our case uh, that I think you'll find interesting. So imagine if Dennis Rodman who likes to dress as a woman, announced that he was transgender and would complete in the Women's National Basketball Association. Or if Floyd May Mayweather said he is transgender and will now compete in women's boxing. In the case of Rodman, it's a possibility because he likes to dress as a woman. They would dominate every competition and cause serious injuries if competitions did occur. Progress in women's sports would be wiped out and the enactment of Title IX would be relegated to a historical footnote. I think the other teams would just stop playing. We wouldn't have women's basketball if Dennis Rodman was on a women's team after he decided that he would go all the way and call himself a woman. Everyone knows about Leah Thomas. Um, when, when Leah Thomas competed as a male swimmer at the University of Pennsylvania, um, Leah Thomas was in the, in the 500s in ranking, in the 500s. Um, he became a, said he was a woman, and um, he won the national women's 500-year freestyle event. That was the event for which he was in the 500s, um, and he was faster than every female collegiate swimmer in the country, Fat, from the mid-500s to number one because instead of competing against males, which he was born as, he was now competing against females who could not compete with his biological advantage. In Connecticut, Selena Sewell was a dedicated high school track athlete who had devoted extensive time training to shave fractions off a second off her race times. Selena trade to win and deserved a fair opportunity to prove her ability. However, after the Connecticut Interscholastic Athletic Conference allowed, trans, uh, allowed biological males, transgender girls to compete on their high school track team, and the Arizona um, Athletic Association has done the same thing, two transgender athletes won 15 state titles that were previously held by nine girls. After months of training for the 55-meter dash, 
Selena was one spot away from qualifying for the final race and to compete for a spot in the New England Regional Championships, where college scouts would be in attendance to determine which athletes would be afforded collegiate sports scholarships. Two biological male transgender girls took first place and second place in the race, depriving Selena of the opportunities that otherwise would have been available. And there are stories like this all over the country, including I've seen some stories in the Republic about girls who work really hard to excel and then they have to compete against a male and they're devastated by it. It's a terrible, terrible injustice. Physical injury becomes a problem. High school volleyball player Peyton McNabb suffered a concussion and neck injury in September 2022 when a biological male transgender female hit the ball into her face. She testified that her life has forever been changed as she still struggles with the side effects of her injuries, including impaired vision, partial paralysis of the right side of her body, headaches, anxiety, and depression. Biological male transgender female mixed martial arts competitor Felix Fox broke the skull, the skull of the opponent. Who was, a, who was a woman. A biological male transgender female hockey player recently caused serious and possibly permanent injury to a biological female player when the, when the larger, heavily muscled player collided with a smaller opponent. One reporter described the incident, noting the size and balance between the two skaters was so great that the far, far smaller team player ended up being propelled headfirst into the boards with enough force to deliver a concussion. So there's a very reasonable basis and a good public policy reason for the statute that I'm defending. Now let's talk about the immediate case that I'm defending. This case is being run by two very large New York law firms. It's a national effort to change our culture. They have found two plaintiffs that they consider to be good plaintiffs but it's just an opening wedge to change the culture of sports in our country. What they have found are two, um, two children, uh, one of whom has had uh, uh, blockers from uh, uh, puberty, and the other of whom is about to have blocker from puberty. And so they're saying, well, this statute is unconstitutional as to them because they don't have an advantage over girls. That is demonstrably false. We have a, a, a declaration from a, an expert who says a number of studies indicate that males' athletic advantages over females begin before puberty and may be apparent as early as six years of age. Um, another study compared nine-year-old females, so this is before puberty, and nine-year-old males. The, the nine-year-old males were faster over short sprints faster over the one mile, could jump 9.5% further from a standing start, could complete 33% more 33 more push-ups in 30 seconds, and had a 13.8% stronger grip. And anybody who's familiar with elementary sports knows the boys haven't hit puberty, but they're, on average, they're considerably better athletes. So we are devoted to winning this case on behalf of every citizen of Arizona who cares about women's and girls' sports. And I'm going to ask um, Representative Bliss to say a few words. Thank you, Superintendent Horn, for this opportunity. Isn't it ironic the person in the story in track and field was named Selena? <laughs> My name is Selena Bliss, not that Selena. However, 45 years ago, I competed in high school sports, basketball and cross country. And if I was displaced at that time by biological males, my trajectory would not be where I am today. I would not have been able to go on to engage in competition, learn my social skills, go on to Arizona State University where I tried out for the girls basketball team. Again, I want to impress upon people the importance of allowing our girls to have their safe place to compete with other biological females. There's a place for everyone, there's a time for everyone.
one. I coached my daughter's volleyball team. I, I track those girls to this day. They're in their mid-30s, and I see the success they've become. Statistically speaking, females that are engaged in sports do better. They do better career-wise. Um, so I'm here to, as on um, behalf of the legislature to speak in support of our females, um, our daughters, our granddaughters. We're here to protect you. We'll do what we can. Um, let's keep our girls safe and let's allow them to uh, compete with other biological females. Thank you. Thank you very much. Selena, the other Selena, uh, Marcy Smith. Hi, um, good morning. My name is Marshy Smith, and I was a swimmer at the University of Arizona. I um, was lucky enough to get a full athletic scholarship to the U of A, um, and uh, really led a path for my brother and sister to also follow me to Arizona and Tucson. Um, I was the captain of the swim team and was fortunate enough to win a Pac-10 and NCAA title my junior year in 2005. Um, this past season, witnessing what unfolded in the, um, in the swimming pool with Leah Thomas competing in the women's category was really shattering to me. Uh, and many of my fellow teammates. I was reached out to by a former teammate of mine, Carly Baldwin, who uh, asked if I would help to write a collaborative letter on behalf of the U of A SWIM alumni. Um, we today have uh, close to 45 signatures of former athletes uh, spanning from the 1990s up until present day, uh, as well as coaches, uh, Riley Gaines has signed on with us as well. We released this letter to the NCAA Board of Governors to um, talk about the injustice that the female swimmers in collegiate sports uh, were faced with this last season. And uh, we so far, over a year later, have received no response whatsoever. On the letter, we featured two NCAA Women of the Year, Olympic gold and silver medalists, American record holders, world champions, and multiple national champions. Um, I, among some of the other girls on the letter, uh, our names and pictures hang in the Hall of Fame in Tucson right now. Um, it was... <sighs> very disappointing to witness leadership um, fail the swimmers last season. Thank you, Marcy. I can only um, dream that my seven-year-old, who's currently in swim lessons, has the opportunity to compete at Arizona someday like I did. And the reason I've been fighting so hard this past year is because of her. Our daughters deserve fair competition. They deserve equal opportunities. They deserve not only a chance to play, but a chance to win. And I hope that my daughter has a place 10 years from now when she's going to college, if we continue to have boys and men participate in women's sports, that can be erased. And I'm just so thankful for the superintendent that he is willing to defend the rights of little girls in Arizona, um, a state that's really near and dear to my heart and my family's. Um, so I just want to thank you so much, and I'm very happy to be here today to support. Thank you, Marcia. That was very moving. Uh, Shauna Glazer. Good morning. I just wrote a couple paragraphs. Um, as a, an elite cyclist and triathlete, I've personally experienced the importance of defending the rights of Arizona girls in sports. In a cycling road race, I was forced to compete against 
someone who was born a male and who identified as a female. His physiological advantages were evident as he effortlessly outperformed all the women, including myself. It is humiliating to admit that I wish I was as fast as born males. I put in the same training hours every single day, but I can never keep up with them. It is degrading to be forced to race with them, knowing that the biological differences between males and females in sports puts us at a significant disadvantage. This experience has further emphasized the urgent need to address this issue. Superintendent Tom Horn fight for girls sports is not about inclusion, but about ensuring a fair and level playing field. Protecting the integrity of women's sports is about recognizing and valuing the unique characteristics of female athletes. It is about giving them equal opportunities to succeed and be recognized for their talent and hard work. By supporting Superintendent Tom Horn, we are advocating for the rights of our daughters, our sisters, and female athletes across Arizona. We want to create a future where our girls can pursue their athletic dreams with confidence, knowing that their efforts will be rewarded on a truly level playing field. Thanks. Thank you, Shauna. And uh, Maria Sims, who's worked very hard with me helping our lawyer defend this case, has a few remarks. Thank you. I just want to say I want to applaud Superintendent Horn for having the strength and conviction to defend the Save Women's Sports Act here in Arizona. We heard so eloquently put by Marshy and Shauna what's at stake here. And we heard the words degrading and humiliating for our girls to have to compete against biological males. That's not what women's sports is all about. It's about lifting our girls up giving them the confidence and strength to be future leaders. And that's why we're fighting so hard to level the playing field. We just had the 50th anniversary of Title IX that is supposed to do just that. And yet here we are having to fight for our girls to give them what we have fought for so many years and now we, it's going to be rolled back. So thank you. We are going to continue this fight and make sure that our girls have the same opportunities that we had. Thank you. And now we're happy to take questions. Well, yes. Let's start off. You, you, you took a swat at the AIA saying they did the same thing as Connecticut. Yeah. If you actually look at the AIA and they did testify at the legislature, yeah. they do it on a case-by-case -case basis, yeah. looking at the child, looking at where they stand in puberty, looking at their own history and everything else. This is not a wide open door. Why should we not let the AIA make those decisions on a case? There were only... I think there were less than two dozen of all the, the sports people that are competing in Scholastic, less than two dozen. Why not let the AIA handle this? Yeah, you know, um, I'm not only critical of the AIA, I'm critical of the Biden administration that wants to make it a case-by-case -case basis. They're trying to amend Title IX, which would be exactly the opposite of what Title IX intended. The problem with making it case-by-case -case is you have people of a far-left persuasion in, in positions in education who, who will lean toward uh, letting transsexuals uh, defeat girls in sports. And I think we need a rule. It's a biological difference between males and females. And, and we need a rule and not let people based on their political convictions uh, 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 violate that rule of nature. So I double you. I'm, I'm not only critical of AI, I'm also critical of Biden. I, I, we know you're critical of Biden <laughs> from the time you're in the list. Let me ask you a, a question. Come on up to the microphone here. Are you looking at Marcy? Yeah, yeah Marcy. Um, the lawsuit, I appreciate what you're saying about collegiate level and even high school level. I ran cross country, although you wouldn't know it to <laughs> that side. Um, do you believe eight year old? boys, given your own experience, I'm sure you were competing from the time you were you saw, do you believe eight-year-old boys are inherently stronger than eight-year-old girls? Um, I guess it doesn't really matter my beliefs, but what, what are the facts? And yes, um, eight-year-old boys are, uh, do perform significantly better than eight-year-old girls, particularly we have data in track and field and swimming. Um, I think, I believe even as young as five years old, I, I personally uh, have a four-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter. And 
I can tell as a mother <laughs> um, the difference between my four-year-old son uh, as compared to my daughter at the same age. So there are biological differences even between children. Um, and, and Howie, I gave you the scientific study with exact percentages of the extent to which they and, exceed. And, I, and you give me two studies, I'll give you two. Again. You know that game, Tom. Mm -hmm. You played it as a lawyer. Well, I believe in science. I know, and okay. we'll, 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 we'll come back to that. Okay. To court. Anybody else have questions? Uh, the legislature, uh, sorry, I forgot your name, I apologize. Selena. But, yeah, Selena yes, Bliss, uh, LD1. Yeah, Thank you. I apologize for that. Uh, you mentioned how there needs to be a place for everyone. Uh, obviously, we, we know this, but where should these 11 and 15 year olds go? Yeah, so I'm also a scientist having a background in healthcare, and I believe in evidence based decisions. Biological boys are biological boys, biological girls are biological girls. Thank you for allowing me to clarify there are boys' teams, there are girls' teams. Now, if you live in a community that's larger and can handle additional types of sporting venues, and options, that's great. I'm from Prescott. We have boys teams, we have girls teams. It's really pretty basic. Thanks for helping me clarify that. Yeah, and, and, and there was something actually I've, I'd forgotten to mention, and that is I've attacked the logic of the plaintiff's position because they're saying boys don't have an advantage over girls. I think they're wrong about that, but if it were true in a specific circumstance, there'd be no reason to have boys and girls teams. You'd have a co-ed team because all the rest of life is integrated between males and females now in, in the in current times. Um, there's only one exception and that's sports. And, um, and the reason for that is that males have an advantage over females. If they don't have an advantage over females, which we don't concede, but if they don't, then you should not divide them into boys and girls teams. They should be co-ed teams. Um, and so the position, and, and so that should be the remedy that the plaintiffs are looking for, where the boys don't have an advantage, have a co-ed team, but, uh, but I think they're, they're, they're reaching for a very unjust result because they want to change these big New York law firms. Uh, these are, this is not the local lawyer hired by people looking for a lawyer. These big New York law firms are coming in. They want to change the culture of our country. Uh, Representative David Cook is here. He wants to say a few words. Thank you, and thank you all for being here. I just wanted to show up and show my support for uh, Tom. I, I've known him for years, and I've known him to be a legitimate logistical thinker about problem solving. And when I looked at this problem at many times in the legislature, I can go back to this. I just voted against a bill that would allow, I am for school choice, but that's a choice those people have to make. And then what they wanted to do is to be able to go in places like rural Arizona and say, yeah, we want all of what we want about school choice, but yet if our child wants to go play on a sports team at the local uh, public school district or another place, they were supposed to be allowed to do exactly what they wanted. Well, you've already made your choice. Your choice was not to go to that school district. Your choice was to keep them somewhere else and get a better education. So it's just mudding the waters. Now, when I look at this also at a professional level, and it's about money, I don't think that any of you, because I sure don't want to see in professional boxing a man out there beating on a woman. So if you want to talk about what's fair, what I think about are things like that. Does anybody here want to see professional boxing where women take on men, where a man stands there and beats on a woman? Or what about the UFC fights that have really taken over that arena of what used to be boxing in my younger generation, right? Holyfield. Those boxers, I don't want to see that. So where does it end? There's no thinking about what it is right here, but what it means down the road. And if you want to think about basketball teams, you want to talk about football teams. Well, football teams have pads and stuff like that, but he's exactly right. We have co-ed sports, and that's where the opportunity for these, these individuals lie, is joining co-ed sports. So, that's the way I would like to put it, and I, I really appreciate anybody here that showed up today to stand up for, like, really what is right. If you want opportunities, they're out there, but life is not fair. Nothing in life is fair. Nothing is, should be given to you, and there are things that each individual can be successful with in their life 
but we're all not going to be successful and we're all not going to have the same opportunities. And what that means is that you might be faced with a little bit of disappointment. And I go back to a book I read about the Rockefellers. When Rockefeller's wife wrote in her memoirs that she now learned what John Jr. Rockefeller wanted for Christmas, she knew what not to get him. And the reason why is because she knew that they had enough money to buy and do whatever they wanted in their lives. But she wanted to know that her kids knew what disappointment was and they knew those feelings. So, Tom, I want to thank you for standing up. Thank Appreciate you, Dave. it. I appreciate your coming. Appreciate it. Other questions? Yes. Uh, Superintendent Horn, you say in your letter, and you mentioned again in the press conference, that you have sympathy for anybody who feels trapped in the wrong body. Yeah. You even mentioned that you support and you have supported LGBTQ plus rights in yeah. the past. Yes. By supporting that community and navigating this, how are you still supporting those who identify as trans, but not supporting them in sports? Because um, it's a matter of fairness. Um, I think, I think my, I believe as a matter of fairness, every person has to be treated with the same dignity and the same respect, regardless of race, sexual orientation, or anything else. That's a fundamental human value, and it's fair. It is not fair for biological boys to compete against girls, even if they say they're girls, even if they have blockers, because I've given you the statistics that show that they still have an advantage at a very young age. Um, and so it, it comes down to a matter of fairness. And I th to me, you know, I, rem I, I, I became emotional about this reading a story in the Republic uh, about a disappointed girl. Um, girls are devastated when they work hard to succeed, and then in comes a biological male who says he's a woman, and, and, and she has no chance. In fact, there was a whole, one of the stories was about a whole softball team that couldn't win their game because they, they had to compete against biological males. Superintendent, then, if yes. you convey that attitude to the kids, and what has been their reaction? To, to what kids? That, you know, you, you support Gays, but not to the point of letting them compete. So play their not to the point of males competing with girls in sports. Right. Yeah. yeah uh, how do you convey that attitude? I support you, but only up to this point. I don't support you. I don't support trans kids. Yeah, you yeah. You, uh, you know, no, no support is unlimited because there are extremes for everything, and and this is a this is something unfair. My support of people, regardless of race and sexual orientation, is a, 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 a concept of fairness. And it is not fair to destroy the dreams of girl and women athletes by having to compete against males. It's that simple. What kind of reception have you gotten when you tell them that? Well, I, I haven't spoken directly with them, I'm, 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 but I speak publicly. Everybody knows what I think. Yes. Someone said that uh, this law is kind of a solution in search of a problem that's really not that common. What are kind of your thoughts on that? Um, I will quote Shakespeare. There are fires that can be trampled out by your feet that if you allow them to grow, rivers cannot quench. These big law firms are trying to change our whole system and our whole culture. And we have to fight them at this stage. I mean, as, as the governor of Alba, Alabama said, it's, it's a war between normal and crazy. And this Department of Education is fighting for normal. I think you pretty much said this, but I just want to make sure it's clear. Yeah. I mean, in so many cases in life, there's a shade of gray. In, in this case, do you believe it's simply a case of black and white, that there is no exception, there is no middle ground? Uh, I, I don't think there's any exception. You know, uh, uh, boys are born with an XY chromosome and girls are born with two X chromosomes and I don't think that in nature there's any any um, compromise on that and and well, and those differences those those differences lead to athletic uh, benefits even at young age even at young ages males have bigger muscles bigger bone structure all kinds of physical advantages and there's no middle ground there. So just to be sure, let me come back to my AIA question yeah. I started with. Started talking about the leftists in education. Would you care to say 
more about that? Is that what you think's on the board of the AIA? I have no idea who's on the board of the AIA. I don't know who's on the board. I was talking about the. I was. I was extending the thought to the Biden administration wanting it to be on an individual basis. I know leftists who are in control of schools for sure. And so, and so, um, we don't want them to have the ability to say. Because of my political ideology, I'm going to let boys compete against girls. But, I, I, but I'm not saying anything about the individuals at the IA. I was making, maybe you didn't catch it, I was making a more fundamental more point. Nuanced comment. Okay, but let's come back to the AIA. Yeah. The AIA has a process. Yeah. There were less than two dozen cases. I can get you, I didn't, I can get you the stats. I, I, I wrote about it. I gave, you, I gave you a Shakespearean quote to deal with the fact that there are two dozen cases. This lawsuit is brought by major New York law firms who want to change our culture. They're, they're not the local lawyers that were hired by these people. Anybody else? If not, thank you all for coming. Thank you all. What's the status of this? When will be the next hearing on the case? I don't know. There hasn't been a hearing set. No, there's not a hearing scheduled yet. We're waiting for the court. Okay. Do you know? Uh, about the, the legislature's attempts to intervene in the case with the New York State Yes, Senate. it's pending. Okay. The other, but I think the, uh, the plaintiffs have small-mindedly opposed their intervention. Here you've got these two big law firms, and you've got the Department of Education. The, the Attorney General's not defending me. The legislature wants to defend their own law, and these New York law firms say, the legislature can't even defend their own law. Tom Horn has to do it all by himself against us. Oh, we will. We will. I'm glad you're so sympathetic, Howie. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Tom. Getting soft in your old age. <laughs> Actually, I'm, to tell you the truth, I'm enjoying it. It's great to fight for something you believe in. Anybody else? If not, thank you all for coming. I appreciate thank it very much. Just one. Yeah.